Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Sven and I hope you're doing great. So today is a great day because today I'm releasing a new DCTL that is designed for look building. Let me introduce to you the Noir Curves. This tool is meant for creatively shaping the contrast curve of an image in an extremely gentle and broad way. It uses four different parametric bands with extremely soft roll-offs so the adjustments feel natural, but it also has two bands for the high and low end as well as a special shadow contrast control. So what's the difference between Resolve's default curves and my DCTL? Sure, Resolve already has curves, why would you need a DCTL for that? And there's many reasons. The main ones are quality and efficiency. I was never really happy with the curves palette for various reasons. For one, you need to use a mouse. If you only want to boost a certain band, a limited range, you would have to create at least three points first. The one you want to modify and two anchor points so you don't blast the entire image. And this is already inefficient. Now, the anchor points should make sure that the rest of the image is not affected. And we all know that when you hold Alt and click on the curve, it will snap them to the line. Well, no, that's wrong. Yes, it snaps them, but they are still already off. And let me just show you, here's an empty node. When I enable or disable it, nothing happens as expected. Now I alt click on the curve and don't change anything else. Let's disable and enable the node again. Something changes. Why? Resolve. Why? The next thing is that the interpolation between the curve points in Resolve is just weird. When I try to create somewhat of an S-curve, the line does not flow smoothly. It's all wonky and not as nice as I want it to be. And also, when two points are relatively close together, the line snaps. We have all experienced this, I guess. It's just annoying and this is what I meant by quality. They're an easy to use solution, but they just don't provide the quality I would expect from a professional software. My DCTL, on the other hand, is built with all of these things in mind. The bands are incredibly smooth, they only affect the desired region, they don't jump around weirdly, and also they are parametric, which means you can simply reset one band without affecting the other ones. They're easy to control because each dimension is just one slider and they are controllable with a grading panel so you can be incredibly precise. So let's quickly go over the sliders. And don't get intimidated by the amount of sliders because they are actually quite easy to understand and grouped in a way that makes it really easy to control them and also they are laid out very efficiently on the color grading panels. So let's start with the Brights Exposure Slider and we'll get to the Mixed Chroma later in the video. And also let's quickly enable the Graph Overlay down here so you can see exactly what is going on. The Brights Exposure Slider pushes the highlights up or down with a really smooth curve. It affects most of the image but of course mainly targets the highlights. And with the Brights Pivot Control you can adjust the range of this curve. It's as simple as that. And the same goes for the Darks Exposure and Pivot Sliders. So Brights and Darks in combination really let you stretch or flatten the image in a really smooth and gentle way. Let's skip over the shadow contrast for a second and go right to the band section. As you can see there are four bands. Each one has a slider for exposure, steepness and position. The exposure is essentially brightening or darkening the band and with the steepness slider you can adjust the range of this band, making it either very broad or very steep and focused. By default it is set to a rather wide range because this turned out to be the most useful in all of the grades I was using it on. And if you're familiar with audio editing this tool might remind you of an equalizer. Each band has a position and a cue. So here you can see a few examples of how different combinations of these bands create different results. Now, let's finally talk about the Shadow Contrast Slider. This one is an extra band entirely intended to add local contrast to only a narrow range. This band defaults to a shadow region, but of course you can move it up higher. But it is intended to add some crunch and detail to shadows without affecting the entire image or crushing the blacks really hard. It really helps in making shadow detail more visible. And now that we understand all of the bands, we can talk about the Mixed Chroma Slider at the very top. Usually, when you would adjust contrast, you would also adjust saturation. Increasing contrast would increase saturation, decreasing contrast would of course decrease saturation, 
and with a curve tool display of increasing and decreasing saturation can easily look really weird and unnatural. You would end up with patches on bands that feel either very oversaturated or grey and muddy. And for this reason I developed this custom chroma blend mode which preserves the original saturation and hue of the untreated image, and therefore it only affects the luma component with its contrast adjustments. This makes the contrast look very natural and lifelike, but if you want you can not only disable this, but actually blend it in as much or little as you want, and this is what the mixed chroma slider is for. But again, since this feels way more natural with the blend mode on, the slider defaults to 1. So how to use it? The idea of this plugin is to really gently massage the image, if you get what I mean. It is supposed to be used on a global level, defining the global contrast rendering. And we saw its effect on the images earlier, it can really make the same image feel very different simply by modifying the overall curve. So it's not intended for shot matching, modifying it on every clip. It should be placed on a higher level and copied over from shot to shot to get consistent results. But if you want, you can actually also use it creatively. So for example, if we track a light bulb in a scene, we could simply raise the upper bands for this light bulb and therefore make it way brighter. But the adjustments feel way more realistic and natural this way than using any of the lift gum again tools or the log wheels. Not even the HDR palette would give us such a realistic result. And I personally always start with the four bands. I push and pull them as far as I desire, maybe even a bit further than what feels right. And then I bring back a little bit of the blacks and whites with the darks and brights sliders. And this got me incredibly beautiful results in the past. Now you might have already spotted the color management dropdown at the bottom and maybe also wondered why it comes with a checkbox to disable the color space awareness. This has one simple reason. The tool itself works in its own internal color space, but if you want to apply it in the current timeline color space without any extra color space conversions, you can simply bypass the color space awareness and this way it will just apply the curve operations. So hopefully this walkthrough gave you an idea of what the tool is capable of. I'm really happy with how it turned out and I can't wait to see what you guys are able to create with it. The DCTL is available on my website and you can also download a free demo version with a watermark. But if you want to buy it, check out the coupon code in the video description to get 25% off until the end of June. So if you're new here, make sure you are subscribed to the channel to not miss out on upcoming episodes. And until then, I'll see you in the next video.